Um, David, you're slacking again. Why are you worrying about who in Veronica bed and who she having sex with? Whether she got history with this man or not, what the fuck you need to be worried about is getting your son out for he squealed and how you doing more? Well, you ain't got no power. We didn't determine that you ain't got no type of power without Catherine. They know that David so. Good luck with that one. But we just going to continue and play along with this whole thing that you jealous of Veronica and Benny when you shouldn't be, when you got your own high-class um escort that you working with. That's for the play you and make you feel really stupid. Let's just run with that. Now, David, I understand that's a sensitive spot for you seeing Benny and Veronica bad, but why are you mad? Really, why are you really mad? You should have came in there. Melissa would have took you upstairs. You should have just saw what you saw and just turned around and said, I'll wait downstairs for you. All that huffing and puffing you doing, worrying about who in her bed, trying to stop you from going out, calling yourself, trying to threaten Benny, all that bullshit and all that. Yes, you, you could have just saved that. Your point was coming to that house was to get your son on and trying to get some th get some sense into Veronica thick-ass skull about her son being gay and that she need to get her son out of jail before something bad happened to him. But you... Push all that to the side, let your insecurity took in, and you decide to get in Veronica ass and Benny ass about them sleeping together. I want to know why you so worried about who in Veronica bed when you didn't move on clearly. You didn't have enough sex with Erica that you, it shouldn't matter to you. That shouldn't phase you. That shouldn't bother you or nothing. Or the fact that, um... And Benny was in Veronica bed. You should have just ignored that and give, didn't give her the entertainment she was looking for. And Melissa down there enjoying every last minute of it. And <sighs> David, again, you dropped the ball again, in my opinion. You could have handled that a lot more better. Now, I hold you to a higher standard than I hold Veronica. I know you carry yourself well, but... You being jealous of that and what they got going on, I don't know why you entertained that and why you gave that so much energy, calling yourself puffing your chest downstairs, telling about you ain't moving out of bed. What? Why? Why, David? You completely dropped the issue and dropped the ball while you was coming to the half of house and decided to puff your chest at some man that, Ver that um, Veronica entertaining at the moment. I just don't get it, but okay then. And then y'all sit up there threatening each other, talking about the FBI, and you got files on him, and he got files on you, and here she go bringing up Erica, talking about some she gonna, um, gonna mess her up and gonna mess up her pretty, her pretty face and what she gonna do to her and this. Then Veronica down there hollering like somebody get... Veronica, why were you was downstairs hollering? Girl, ain't nobody gonna come to your rescue because you were down there hollering, talking about some old David assaulted me. What was that? You wasn't recording, you wasn't filming. So what was all that hooping and hollering you was doing? Talking about some David assaulted me. Girl, don't nobody care. If Melissa would have saw that, she probably would have been on the ground laughing and thought the shit was funny. So I don't know who you thought was going to come to your rescue there. But you called yourself, had to put on a performance, I guess. I guess you was performing and you was on the job at that moment, calling yourself, I guess, trying to scare David. I, I don't know what you was doing there. But nice try, though, but you failed. Melissa, at this point... I don't know how I feel about you. You act like you bad. You tell me she put her hands on you one more time. It's going to be you and her. Y'all still talk about this, baby, but that woman's stomach flatter than a... Mm-hmm. That woman that lost that baby in that accident, and I'm surprised, Veronica, you just not noticed why her, why she ain't showing and why her stomach got flat all over again. She had a little pudge, but mind you, that pudge disappeared time she got in that car accident, and that car got flipped upside down. So now you concerned about your grandbaby? Mm-hmm. Yo, never mind. I ain't gonna even say that. That's insensitive for me. But yeah, Veronica, too little, too late. You should have cared about that baby when y'all got in that accident maybe a little sooner but I don't expect nothing more out of you and Melissa damn sure don't care and I don't care how many empty tire threats you make um 
Melissa. If Veronica put her hands on you, it's gonna be hell for you. You ain't you ain't gonna do shit, God. If you were that bad as you say you was, and you was as crazy as you look, your ass would have slapped the shit out of her, or kicked her ass down them stairs. That's all I'ma say about that. You ain't as bad as you look, and your little empty tired threats, your crazy threats ain't going nowhere with me nor Veronica. And Veronica ain't scared of you, hell. She got her own crazy to deal with, meeting her damn son that she don't that she can't get over that he gay, but. We gonna need that one alone, and we gonna wait till we get to that moment, though. But still, though, Melissa, give it up. Call Veronica and have you wrapped around her finger in two seconds or left. All she gotta do is call the crazy house, crazy house to have them people escort your ass out, toting you out her house. And what you gonna do then besides screaming, hollering, talking about, please don't take me. So I don't understand why you got all this bad girl acting. You crazy. I show you crazy. You put your hands on me. It would have took nothing but Veronica to put her hands on me one time and she uh, know not to never play with me not to talk to me funny don't even much look at me crazy or look at me sideways or i'll be tempted to leap and leapfrog on your ass so melissa give it up you tired you through i you ain't scaring nobody but your own crazy so move it along and you can stop doing it and it ain't working for nobody and i'm done with that um, there was more to that. Oh, yeah, the Veronica and Candace conversation. <clears throat> Again, Veronica, man, you gonna have to have an understanding. You and your little homophobic slurs you doing, you thinking that's cute, but that's not really cute. I don't know why you and Candace teaming together. Candace, I don't know how you can stand to be around this same here for that try to blackmail you once upon a time, try to nail your ass to the coffin. But now you want to work together with her to bring down David because you feel on top of weight because David got the upper hand over your ass. Now you mad and you want to... um team up with Veronica. Well, you on the wrong team, sweetheart. Just like Erica on the wrong team. Her team down and dead, and she don't realize that you and your plan last with um Candace ain't gonna get you nowhere. You on a limited time and a limited time base, and sooner or later, Candace gonna off your ass, and that's gonna be a great day for me, because I'm tired of you too, so you play nice now. If I was you, I'd take it slow in trying to use David, trying to get Candace what she want from, um... Trying to get Candace what she want from David, because as soon as she done and she done using you, I got bad news for you, sis. It's not gonna be good for you. Called Bastley, I think this the last end or your last breath you gonna take after what she did watch she get done with David and possibly get what she want. I think it's gonna be next you getting buried beside Quincy. So and oh war, whichever one you for no, she was friend with war. So get ready to get your plot. Go ahead and get your ground set. Go ahead and claim your property now. Cause sooner or later you're gonna be laying right there beside war. So go ahead and get ready for that and be prepared to take your life your um last final breath and your last couple of hours of freedom you got till she get what she wants from out of day because it's not looking good for you, sweetheart. And I'm just saying, you might want to take that slowly and savor every moment you got with her cause. I'm telling you now, once she get what she want from you, it's going to be crickets for you, sweetheart. And I'm sure you're not ready to die yet, but guess what? You fit to die. <laughs> and I won't say I wouldn't miss you because I'm not going to say that because that'll be me lying. I won't miss you. I'm just telling you now that the way you done Candace, even though Candace not my favorite person, how the way she acting, she turned from one of my favorite to my least favorite. So I won't say I won't miss you. I'm just going to say it like that. I, I, I won't miss you at all. That's all I'm saying. Oh, George, another one. We got George and we got Oscar. We'll get the Oscar in a few minutes and miss the officer. So we'll get to these three fools in three in two seconds. <sighs> George, what can I say about you in a nice way? You still trying to convict the criers. You still trying to get yourself a conviction or trying to convict them. You another one need to give it up. You 
Oscar, Mr. Officer, Candace, Jim. All y'all just need to jump in one bed together and shake it up, make it wet and shake it up. And all y'all just need to fall at the same damn time. You another one need to give it up. Jennifer Salas, I kind of did have like kind of some respect for her because she actually... Well, I can't say she actually done her job well. She was shady to her, and she was also trying to convict them to a little bit of evidence saying, George, good luck. And <laughs> I don't know why you went down there messing with Wyatt, asking him about do they own a gun, what kind of gun do they own, um, do they own this type of gun, said type of gun. Wyatt was high and gone the whole couple of times. All through the season, if you look at look at it, Wyatt was either strung out high or then lost his damn mind. Half of the time, he was high when he hit that little girl. He just not getting sobered up. Do you honestly expect... Well, I don't expect nothing less out of you, George, because you wasn't there. That boy don't remember um what color eyes his daddy got unless he saw him in, uh, in the previous episodes. Do you honestly think he probably don't even know what color walls that it was in them house where he moved out? So did you honestly think he honestly think he was gonna tell you did they or did they not have a gun? You literally had to force that out of him saying, "Do they own this type of gun? Are you sure they own own this type of gun? Work with me, Wyatt." Work with me on trying to convince your parents. Like, really? <laughs> Good luck with that when they're trying why yet. And um, that whole conversation with Catherine, first you come in the house being friendly. Then you try to scare the shit out of a woman thinking something wrong with her son. Then Jennifer Sellison tried to say that, um, I forgot the girl name, Catherine Daughter, that, it wasn't a suicide, it was a murder, which it wasn't. It was suicide. The girl shot her own damn brains out. And the fact that D.A. Sellison was um trying to convict somebody or that when the girl killed her own ass, no thanks to Candace and her crazy-ass parents. And the fact that you going to run with that, try to use that, then going to talk about the same gun she used is the same gun that shot D.A. Sellison. And now you trying to convict them and talk about a... Give it up, George. I'm bored with you. Give it up. Uh, quit trying to convict the choir, the crowds because it's not going to work. Nice try, though, but it's not going to work, and you just basically beating the dead horse. Go find something else to convict the choir, the criers of because this working on this Salison case plus working on that homicide story, slash suicide, and you trying to make that and turn that into an angle, and then you trying to use Jeffrey and Candace, trying to use Use them as they, you trying anything, ain't you? You just grabbing that invisible scroll, trying to grab something, hold on to it tight, thinking you gonna convict the damn cries that easily. Like, come on, George, now. You wasted all these years in college getting that fancy ass job, and this the best you can do. I don't understand, but we just gonna move on right on long. Oscar, I want you to go find you another profession called Buddy. Like I said, Wyatt is the dumbest person on this goddamn show. His daddy is the first dummy. Wyatt is the second dummy. You mean to tell me you ain't even close to 50 um fifty percent of getting wide money? I mean, getting that money away from um, Wyatt yet? You got to get his passwords and all this and hack his shit just to get him. Like I said, why is not the smartest person on this thing? That boy was, the only thing he was smart at is getting high. He wasn't smart for getting that car, killing that girl, but that was the smartest thing he ever done for himself, getting high. Why is a dummy with a whole bunch of money? I'm surprised he ain't coke not snorted that, snort that money up his arm nose yet. Well, unfortunately, he getting clean, so I am grateful grateful for that. He is he is cleaning himself up and cleaning up his act, though. But Oscar, you might have completed your other job, Jim. Here for you, like the blackmailing. I mean, stealing Candace's money, but 
like I said, Wyatt is not the smartest person on this um show. And the fact that you're struggling so hard and that you can't get this money from Wyatt, it says a lot about you and show how amateur you really is when it comes to your assets and recovery job. But you need to go find you another profession. Maybe you need to go and trying to seduce women, trying to get their money. Maybe that's your anger. You perfect. Got this whole trying to get wide assets and that money and you trying to take that money back from wide and why not that smart nor intelligent and it's taking you all this damn a whole damn season two and a half season just to get this money i question your job and your performance buddy i'm just saying i question you and the fact that you can't even get a money from a dummy mm -mm 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 -mm. you might need to go find you another job book um Mr. Officer Jeffrey and his wife, and Mr. Officer Y, Mrs. Officer. I guess you was going back in that room to rough up Jeffrey again, because you wanted him to come out there and say he wouldn't move, and Mr. Black Officer come getting his ass involved, telling him to get up. You got to boss them around. Don't let them boss you around. Then you calling yourself trying to scare, trying to scare him in the getting up coming in the room for you for I guess you can rough him up again uh kiss him where you miss him man I don't know what was your anger was with that but you didn't get your way then your wife coming there asking you now miss wife I got a now miss miss officer I got a wife I mean Mrs. Officer I got a um course a bone to pick with you. Now you said your husband ain't touch you for a while uh, but I don't know how long he haven't touched you. You said you tried to get loving from him. He wouldn't give you no loving. You always busy. He always busy. You mean to tell me you ain't been suspected that your um, husband might be gay or in or he might not be attracted to you anymore? The sign was clearly there. I'm not saying that he gay or he don't know how to say he. He said he don't know how to tell you he gay. Okay, I understand that. But Mrs. Officer, come on now. When your husband not touching you or giving you the love you need, clearly you should have been. It should have been a perfect time for you to start looking through his shit to find out who else who else he giving his love loving to. When it damn sure ain't none of you. Now come on now, Mrs. Officer. Now you a judge for crying out loud. Don't you know when your husband not touching you, something in that milk stinky, you might need to inspect your milk that you know respect your husband make sure he ain't cheating on you with somebody else or doing some things you might be embarrassed about i'm sorry that in, uh, veronica embarrassed you like that in open court in front of exposing your husband but you should have known something was up a long long time ago i mean seriously i think jeffrey and them started Going on slow and Jeffrey season three, season four, from season four to now. You mean to tell me you just not suspecting that your, something might be going on with your husband? Okay, then, well, I'm done with you then, sweetheart, because clearly you should have known something was up with your husband and you roll over to touch him and tell him you ready. He sit there and ignore your cold rubs and you telling him you ready. Clearly, you should have been expecting his draws a long, long time ago. I'm just saying, Miss Officer. So you, if that was up for you to the, um, the one of what your husband doing when he ain't around you. He ain't touching you. He ain't rubbing on you. So I'm questioning your judgment and how you became a damn judge if you don't know this. So I'm going to leave that one alone too. And yeah, I'm going to leave that one alone and move the hell along. I'm just shaking my head that you, Miss Officer, that you didn't suspect that. Jim had a scene tonight, but I don't remember him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Candace's new client will. Candace Luke, um, what can I call her and be nice by calling her? Hmm. Candace new worker. So Jim, they got a hold of Candace new worker, and he don't realize she record for Candace. And oh, you got an expensive booty, five five k for your booty. Oh, you better do a goddamn magic trick. Mm. 
I'm just gonna say that for 5k, you better do a flip on your head or give it to me so good that we wind up on the damn wall and don't imagine and not wondering how the hell we got that for five thousand dollars. You ain't that damn bad, not scary to care that I'm gonna give you 5k just for you to entertain me for the well, however long y'all have says 5k. Ooh, y'all and y'all prices. See, the, mm, Jam, she better have you him to the wall for 5K. I'm just saying, she better have you on the wall, flip you by her, get, her by, get you by your neck and throw you on your leg, by her leg. Uh, she better get on top of you like this, grab you by your neck with her legs, slinging you on the floor still on top of you. She better spin around, hop on hop on it, dosey do door around it, and every damn thing else. Hell, she better do the pasta de blum, uh, uh, however you say that damn Spanish dance. She better be doing all that in the cha-cha-cha for me to give her 5K. I'm just saying, I ain't trying to be funny or nothing. I'm just saying for 5K, you better do some magical things to my body. For I give you 5K. I'm like with Jim, 1K. That's about all you getting. 5K, you better surprise me. I'm just saying. Anyways, though, y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all night. Bye.